It is the year 1328, and the French king, Charles IV, dies without a male heir to the throne. Two men attempt to take the empty throne. Their names are Edward III of England and Philip VI. Edward III was the son of King Charles IV's daughter, Isabella, in other words, his grandson. He was currently the ruler of England, but that wasn't enough to suit his growing desire for power. Philip VI was, on the other hand, the nephew of Charles IV. When her father died in 1328, Isabella was unable to claim the French throne for herself due to the fact that she was a woman, so she claimed it for her son. The French rejected this claim, saying that Isabella could not announce a right of which she did not possess. In spite of this conflict, something much greater would arise in only a few years. War. A war that would last 116 years. Historians would later call this war the Hundred Years' War. The Hundred Years' War was an intimate struggle between England and France in the 14th to 15th century over the control of the lands in France and ultimately the crown to this realm. Essentially, the war was a series of battles with long periods of peace in between. The war lasted from 1347 to 1453. The war had its ups and downs for both sides, with the English winning most of the early battles with their neat tool, the longbow. However, in time, the French found its way with the help of one girl, Joan of Arc. Hands were dirtier, hearts were greedier, blood covered the lands completely. How did it ever come to an end? Stay with us. It's been nine years since the death of Charles IV, and still the French throne is empty. Minor disputes between Edward III and Philip VI have grown into something much larger. King Edward III is provoked by French attacks on lands he owns in France. He decides to take a gamble by declaring himself King of France, arguing that he can legally claim the throne through line of his mother. It was not until one point when Philip VI of France claimed the French fiefs of England's King Edward III as part of his own kingdom when war would break out. It is the year 1346, nine years into the Hundred Years' War. It seems it's anyone's game at this point. However, just one battle will defy the odds, the Battle of Crecy. Here the French witnessed an astonishing English victory. Two different armies fought each other at the French village of Crecy in 1346. French feudal armies relied on mounted nobles or knights that wore heavy armor and could hardly move when they were not on horseback. Their weapons were swords and lances. Some of the foot soldiers used crossbows, which were effective only at short ranges. However, the English army was made of lightly armored knights foot soldiers, and archers armed with longbows. Some soldiers were recruited from the common people and were paid to fight. The English longbow had many benefits over the crossbow. Larger arrows could be notched and fired more quickly. The arrows flew farther, faster, and with greater accuracy. At Crecy, the longbow assisted the English in defeating the much larger French force. In fact, the English won most of the early battles of the war, even though they were outnumbered, such as in the Battle of Crecy. The loss hit the French really hard, until their bones were sore. If they were going to win this war, they had to come back stronger and smarter. But with their many defeats on the battlefield, their spirits were worn out. How did the French ever get back on their feet? Decades into the Hundred Years' War, and the French have continued to suffer many losses. Despite this, the French gradually won back their lands from the English. In 1389, the Scots signed a truce with England, preventing further French agitation in the North for several years. However, nothing lasts forever in this world. In 1415, after a long truce, 
King Henry V invaded France again. However, the English were up against a much stronger force, since now the French were using more modern strategies. The king was recruiting his army from commoners, paying them with money gathered from taxes, like the English did. But the credit of the French getting back on their feet goes to one special girl, Joan of Arc, a 17-year-old peasant girl. But I think what you can attribute to Joan of Arc is the fact that she was able to rally the French. And before, I think, you know, we said almost 90 years of the war, they were kind of behind and, and you know, floundering. And I think what she gave them was sort of someone to rally around and she breathed new life into their cause. And for that reason, I think that um, you really do have to give her credit for getting them kind of back into the swing of things and helping pull them through the war. She claimed that she heard the cries of St. Catherine, St. Margaret, and St. Michael, who urged her to save France. As a result of this event, she put on a suit of armor and went on to fight. At this point, Joan of Arc appeared at the court of King Charles VII of France, convincing him to allow her to lead her own army. She persuaded Charles that she was worthy by being able to recognize and locate him in a crowd, even though she had never met him before or had any idea of what he looked like. She spoke. After dinner, I went to the king who was at the castle, and I recognized him among many others by the counsel of my voices. I told him I wanted to make word on the English. Joan of Arc had a strong hatred toward the English as she once said in battle, You, men of England, who have no right to this kingdom of France, the king of heaven orders and notifies you through me, Joan the maiden, to leave your fortresses to go back to your own country, or I will produce a clash of arms to be eternally remembered. Having proved that she was of great value, Charles allowed Joan to lead a relief force in April. Officially, in May 1429, Joan led a French army to victory in the Battle of Orleans. This was a major victory for the French and essentially the turning point for them. She attacked the English in unison with a force from Orleans and she drove the English from their positions. The next day, the English abandoned the siege and the military advantage now lied within the hands of the French. However, in the next year, Joan of Arc was captured by allies of the English, known as the Burgundians, who delivered her to the English courts. The English accused Joan of being a witch and a heretic and burned her at the stake. She was only 19 years old. Before her death, Joan was interrogated in her prison cell by the Cardinal of Winchester and later she had to face a long and serious trial. The keep of the castle of Rouen was where Joan was imprisoned during her trial. It has since become known as the Joan of Arc Tower. Joanne's heroism altered the way many French men and women felt about their king and nation. She also brought a new sense of national unity to the country. 22 years after Joan's death, the French finally drove the English out of France. About 500 years later, Joan was declared a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. The French continued to win the war all the way till 1453, even with the loss of Joan of Arc. Finally, the English were defeated at the Battle of Castillon on July 17, 1453.
the English king Henry the Sixth surrendered his demand to rule France. Henry suffered from mental illness, and his wife Margaret of Anjou ruled for him. By late 1453, Henry and Margaret lost all of England's land in France, except of the port at Calais. This would remain in their possession until the mid 1500s. The war marked the end of English attempts to control the continental lands of France. In the end, the French seized control over their lands. In all, the Hundred Years' War was a series of conflicts waged from 1337 to 1453 between the rulers of the Kingdom of England and the rulers of the Kingdom of France for power over the later kingdom. This war occurred over 116 years, with periods of peace in between, and it had the English winning most of the early battles and the French winning most of the later battles. A primary reason for the early success of the English was because of their neat tool, the longbow. One major reason for the French's later success was the courageous acts and encouraging words of Joan of Arc. The origins of the war is traced back to Richard III of England wanting the French throne. Yet this position was also wanted by someone else, Philip VI of France. The war ended with the French winning most of their land back. From the perspective of the 14th century, however, the most significant result of the war was that the notorious leaders were occupied with fighting each other when the people of Western Europe desperately needed their guidance. If it was not for the greed and desire for power of these rulers at that time, this war of eternity would have never emerged. It's so sad to see what the evil elements of this world can do to mankind. I've learned how a country could rise gradually but collapse so easily, so quickly. I saw how the words of one person could inspire so much and have such an impact on a much wider scale. The Hundred Years' War will forever remain one of the world's greatest historical events. Although its purpose wasn't for the most moral reasons, it will eternally be known in history as the fierce war that lasted 116 years.